Good morning, everybody. Orin J here with another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. And today, I'm going to do a little two week account show and tell. Show you what my about $120 and two to three hours a day, sometimes one hour, sometimes up to three, my sort of casual play has got me in the first two weeks of Ever Crisis. I'm going to talk about my experience with the game, what I'm focused on now, what I worry about for the future of the game, and what I look forward to with the future of the game. Just kind of wrap all those thoughts up in one video but let's go ahead and start with my current main party my current main party is sitting at 96,000 power again i'm playing for on average maybe in two hours a day right and i'm not spent a bunch of money so i feel like 96,000 power is a decent spot for me to be in my main party is pushing towards level 50 fairly fast and once they get to level 50 i will figure out a way to start leveling some other characters as well as i think that's an that's a avenue you can go with this game to increase the enjoyment start using another character especially somebody like Aerith. i kind of want to play Aerith as like an attack mage just see if that would be a fun thing to do still here's my character progress and overall i felt like character experience gain has been fine it feels if it's anything it's a little bit slow but with the limited number of characters that we've had in the game I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it would be a problem if on week two, people were sitting here with like their whole roster max level, then you're just, that would feel bad to me. So I've been fine with the pace of character experience gain. Now I want to talk about weapons for a second because my weapon roster looks like this. And I have a couple things to say. One, I only have one level 90 weapon right now. It's the Murasame. This is currently what my main focus is once I'm done with the summer event. I need one more duplicate for the current summer sword to finish out that you'll get it to its 10 dupes then i'm back to farming weapon materials i think it's very important to get level 90 weapons um get enough of them that you can have all weapon slots in your group be filled with level 90 weapons and eventually i think you just keep farming this until you have enough level 90 weapons that you can be like oh i need a magic defense stat on all my characters because some future boss is like crushing me with magic attacks so i think there's just like infinite value here almost in leveling all of the weapons in the game and one thing that is a nice thing about the game that kind of concerns me for later is What's been nice is how generous they've been with the gotcha. Like we've gotten so many free crystals. We're getting a 10 pull every day for seven days and the five star weapons have been flowing. Honestly, my free pulls have been pretty bad. I've only had like one out of my last four that even had five stars in it, but my pulls for the most part have been pretty lucky. And as those five star weapons keep flowing in, as I'm turning my three stars into four stars, my four stars into five stars, it keeps giving me targets to level up. And I think that's a very important thing in this game if we run out a free currency like here's a worry i have right they're being very very generous right now very generous and i hope that they are making like i hope they're seeing that they are that is being rewarded with players feeling good about the game and like spending money because they're feeling good about the game and that encourages them to keep being generous but the honeymoon phase for a game will run out and i hope that when that happens they don't decrease the amount of events they don't take away the free currency they don't keep giving something every week that helps us hit this gotcha over and over again because when it comes to leveling these weapons man you need 10 duplicates of a five star weapon to max that thing out the generic character specific dupes those aren't coming in fast and i think you probably want to save those for things like a murasame or like limited time stuff so when it comes to leveling you know you're like chris swords of the world you gotta pull a lot of copies so i hope they just keep giving us access to the gotcha uh, and don't get stingy there because i feel like this is not a game that would survive stinginess from the development team like i'll just be super blunt with that some games um you don't need to hit the gotcha all the time right like you go pull a new character and then you can start building that character you can farm their gear uh etc this game i feel like we need the gotcha a lot to keep this game flowing so i just hope they stay generous uh and i just want to show you like here's my current weapons obviously i focused on cloud matt and tifa since those are my main three these will be the first three weapons i put to level 90 then it's just going to be a lot of sub weapons that i like 
boosting those things to level 90. And it's been very free to play and light spender friendly to get these uh, 10 dupes for, for uh, the beach parasol and the thousand waves. Just for the fact, like look at the stats on these things, like 268 attack, 285 magic, comparable to like a level 90 Mirasame. You know, like look at these gotcha weapons and their stats. Because these, even at level 60, are 10 stars, you do get a nice bit of stats for them, which has been nice for now. I'm sure I'll replace them later, but you know, it's keep these free things flowing. That's what I'm saying. I hope the free stuff keeps flowing in. Now, a part of my account that I feel like I've been the least lucky in is Materia. Guys, look, like my Materia is not very good. I know I can go to the exchange shop and like trade in coins for those uh, four star Materias in there, but people have five star Materias now and I am playing the game every day and I don't have a five-star materia, and that feels kind of bad. My, one of my four stars, both of these are random four stars, by the way. These are ones I crafted as four stars. Uh, Ruin Ra, my four star, is terrible. Like, the, the substats on this are trash. 1.5% heals okay, but 12 physical attack, 3 magic defense, 7 physical defense is kind of bad. Um, this one's nice. The HP and physical attack here. I like this Ruin, Ruin Ra blow. This is my best materia I have. The problem here is I can't really focus on this. Like, I constantly have five materia being crafted, and you can see right now I about need to go through here and uh either expand this which i don't plan on doing or level like my rune rub blows or you know level something else up by consuming some two stars so uh materia i think this is something you just passively focus on the whole time in the game and then just hope that every time you come in here and like claim some materia you get luckier than this right you want to hit some five stars you want to keep the crafting going just keep crafting even if you can't put extra stuff in there and guarantee yourself those two stars Guys, a little thing, both of the five stars that I hit were not added added materials. They were both just what you just saw. Me just clicking, hey, craft this material. And it's just like, oh, here's a four star. Awesome. So more of that would be nice. I'd also like to see more books added to the game. Now, I, oh, look, this one just finished. I have not. Hey, we got a three star. Let's actually see if this one's uh, that physical attack plus three seems pretty terrible, though. Oh, well. I would like to see more materia types added to the game, and I think we will get more materia types added to the game. That'll be a fun thing to do, a fun thing to focus on later, and then that'll help expand builds because I really have enjoyed the way the weapon system with their movesets and the materia system combine to essentially let any of your characters be able to hit any elemental weakness they need to, be physical attackers or magic attackers or supports. I've really liked that. I thought that's one of the better parts of this game is the way materia system and weapons have just meshed together. It's very Final Fantasy VII. It's something I've enjoyed about the game a lot. Now, something else I want to say, and this goes in line with how generous the development team has been. Uh, we've gotten a lot of events, right? We are about to hit the two week mark and we've gotten the beach event times two. Like we have the Zack part of the, or you know, the first set of banners in the beach event and the second set of banners in the beach event that came with a whole new five star weapon. If like, I often compare gacha games to hanging out in a club, right? As opposed to, what's my daily? Let me claim my daily rewards here. Um, and the, here's my last one. You can see I'm almost done with this. Let's go ahead and let's fight a fight. Let's have a battle going in the background. Why not? Anyway, I often compare gacha games to hanging out in a club more so than playing a traditional video game. And so what I mean by that is this. When you go to like an old school game store or you download a new like AAA title, you pay 70 bucks or whatever a AAA title costs these days and you're getting a hundred-ish hours if it's a long game out of that 70 bucks. And there's this expectation that like, sure you can play it again, but I'm getting more or less a finished product at that point. And then, okay, I'm done with it. I might revisit and play it again later, but I beat the game and I'm finished. Gotcha games, like these mobile online games are more like I'm hanging out in the Final Fantasy VII Club with my Matt, my Cloud, my Tifa. I revisit them every day. It's kind of like a bar I go to after work where I get a drink, hang out with my bros. In this case, it's on Discord instead of live. Although, although it would be really cool to have a like club or a bar that I went to where we talked about like gotcha gaming. That seems really awesome. I don't live in a city big enough for that to be a possibility. Still, I'd like that a lot. Uh, so you guys see what I'm saying, right? It's like you and your friends playing a game and you just kind of play it every day. One thing Ever Crisis has not done yet two weeks in, which many gotcha games have at this point, is fallen into the, the 
trap of like, you're done with everything in the first week and now you're just sitting waiting for the next thing. This is something I remember about with some other Square Enix gotcha games, uh, Echoes of Mana, which hit end of service really quick. Man, Echoes of Mana was a really fun game. And I know a lot of you guys that watch this channel probably also played that with me back in the day. And uh, yeah, what happened there was we ran out of stuff to do. The only thing that ever came out was new gacha characters and then a small little event where that new gacha character was like crucial to beating the event. This has already had so much stuff coming out like event wise that um, I can't even, even be able to like focus as much on farming generic things as I wanted. Now, keep in mind, I am playing this pretty casually. And while I'm talking about that, I think that's probably Probably the way the game was meant to be experienced, right? Playing this game for an hour or two every day has felt really nice. And in fact, it's made the events feel like something that, okay, like in War of the Visions, for example, a new event comes out, right? Or a new farmable thing comes out. I can often knock that com event completely out in one day, and then I just background farm it for another day, and I'm done. While I wish Ever Crisis had background farming in it, like that would be really nice when you're talking about farming like weapon experience stuff, things like that. There's not a stamina reuse cap in the game. I think we would... It might be a trap. Maybe I don't actually want there to be background farming in the game yet. My point is this. This little watermelon event has kept me busy for like a week. And that's really nice. And then I just know that when the watermelon event is over or when I'm done with it, I can just flow back to what I'm farming in the regular part of the game. And as someone who is like an old school RPG player, as someone who plays a lot of gacha games, I really don't mind farming like I actually kind of like farming I like having something to work on constantly and you know I like that this game I don't feel pressured much like that's been really nice I, there's not a lot of pressure on me if I have a day where I just log in do my dailies and log out done so be it nobody's climbing a ladder higher than me in that time and so that's been cool now we just farm this event one more time I do want to show you guys real quick my tower progress this is an area where I have not focused in yet and I have this thing when I play games it's like if we go to uh home bring that up real quick here uh solo content sealed tower battle tower here we go so sealed tower etc I am on floor like 20 something 27 28 27 I like there's this weird part of me that like doesn't want to do this until I'm like ready right and I am pushing to a point like 30 I could probably beat Ooh, floor 30 would be tough. So maybe I am about as far as I could be. Anyway, I could easily clear floor 27 and I could probably push into like floor 29, 28. Still, there's this huge part of me that like doesn't want to mess with this until I have like all my level 90 weapons. And you know what? That's okay. One thing I've enjoyed about this game, like I said, is I feel like I'm just playing at my own pace and I ain't worried that maybe some people are pushing B50 on the sealed tower yet not not my thing not even struggling with that not even worrying and so there we go that's kind of my thoughts on the game so i told you guys what i like have liked i've liked the way the game's been generous i like the way the game's been like sending out events and okay let's talk about the 120 bucks that i've spent feels pretty cheap like i know 120 dollars some people hear that and they're like oh my god you spent 120 dollars on this game Guys, we're talking about gacha gaming right here, right? Like in the gacha world, 120 bucks is real small fish. It's real small fish. And in fact, that's like the price of some super premium Starfield or something like that. And while this is not that, like this is not like AAA Starfield, this is a game that I plan to play for months and months and months, maybe even years. Who knows? If they keep rolling stuff out like they are, if they keep introducing me to like new Sephiroth characters, stuff like that, I probably will be interested in playing this game for a long time. And so, a hundred bucks here and there for a club that I essentially, like I said, get to hang out in, I feel okay about that. So I haven't felt like this game's been a ripoff uh, beyond just the normal, like, let's be real, beyond just the normal, like, ripoff gacha games kind of are. Um, yeah, I know a lot of people also have really hated the, like, you, you complete stuff and you get a pop-up message just like, hey, do you want to buy this limited time deal? guys just be able to overcome that like i don't know like if that bothers you how do you exist in the world i guess is my thing right like I, there's been a lot of people like oh they're aggressively monetizing have you been to walmart walmart aggressively monetizes have you been in the world in 
America or wherever. Like, I feel like everything is aggressively monetized. So I guess maybe I'm just a little immune to it at this point or whatever. So anyway, that's my account. That's what I've been doing. Let me guys know how your accounts are going. I do read all the comments. Like I said, I can't respond at work, which is I read them on like my lunch breaks, my planning period. So it is what it is. Thank you all though for watching my videos. Thank you to everybody who's been a new member to this channel since since Ever Crisis came out. I appreciate all of you guys who like, watch, comment, subscribe, listen, all those things. I'll catch you next time. Peace.